Hey, this is Brandon Styles. Welcome to the channel. Today we are doing another UI breakdown and we are going over the new iPhone sales page on Apple's website. Today as a special guest I have one of my very good friends and an amazing designer, Brooks Hungate, and he is going to walk through this with us. So the things that I might not see in the design that he knows 10 times more about, he's going to show you why this works, why this site is cool, and I'm going to try and bring in some of the frameworks and tools they're using to make this page more engaging. As you can probably tell, most people want to have like an Apple-like solution for their sites, right? So breaking this down will kind of show you what Apple, who's a very modern company, what kind of things that they're doing in their UI design and UX design, why it's engaging, and why it helps sell more iPhones. Without further ado, let's join Brooks and check it out. Welcome to uh, this video, and today we're going to be breaking down the new iPhone SE page. And I have a very special guest today. This is Brooks Hungate, one of the best graphic designers I know. Check him out at brookshungate.com. He is mute, um, but but uh, he's he's very good at sign language, and and, and he'll I'll, I'll do captions too. <laughs> so. Oh, so what we're going to be doing today is breaking down this iPhone SE page. So we're just going to dive into it. Brooks, I would love to, I would love for you to start and, and kind of take us down the page and, and just kind of some things that jumped out to you for why Apple created a, a web page like this to sell the iPhone SE and just some stuff that jumps out to you about the design to make it look clean. We've talked about this before. A lot of clients, um, when they don't know what they want, they'll be like, I want you to make it look more like Apple. What is like giving something like an Apple look in your mind? Uh, minimalism mm -hmm. is giving the Apple look. Um, the thing with Apple that they've done really well with since the very beginning of time, even with, you know, started with Steve Jobs and now Tim Cook is minimalism, which is when I, being a designer, I do a lot of identity design. And so when I'm talking to a client and I ask them like, hey, what do you want in a logo? They always say simplicity and minimalism, which is great because that's awesome. And then when you ask them, hey, if, if there was any uh, brands who does this really well or anything like that, is there anybody that you like? And usually you want them to pick someone from their field of, you know, their competition. They never do. They always say Apple. I want my logo to look like Apple. <laughs> and it's just like the, a funny thing that they all say, like, yes, everybody wants their logo to look like Apple. <laughs> That's kind of the, the, the thing. But um, from the outside looking in, it's everything so minimalistic, which is amazing and why they are so successful and why other companies have gone that same direction. Microsoft Surface tablet that they they came out with their big workstation several years ago you went to the website it's very similar to what you're seeing right here mm -hmm. it's the 3d renders and just enough text to tell you what's going on to make you want to learn more as we go through you'll see the way that they feed information and transition into the next bit of information is all so seamless it's it's almost like watching a movie or playing a game in a sense like yeah you're right the, when this pops up all you see is the navigation the title a couple calls to action up here and then it's just the phone there's no there's no anything you know, there's a buy button. So yeah, when I load this, my eyes go directly to that phone first and, and like a really high quality rendering. And I think that's something Apple does well is amazing imagery. Mm -hmm. And then it pops right over to that buy button right up here. And that's the action they want to take. They want people to buy the phone. And if that's all it takes, then that's good. So when I was researching and looking at this video, I would look at sales pages similar to this for like Samsung, uh, like the Galaxy phones or the Google Pixel phones, they're all minimalistic, but they none of them just looked as cohesive as this. It was almost like you said, they were trying to, but this just, Apple at the end of the day, just always looks so crisp. And is that because they're like set it, they're paving the way, do you think? Or they just hired the well, best? I think it's a little bit of both. And I don't even know if they are technically paving the way. If you look way back into the history, Johnny mm -hmm. Johnny which is the, he was the initial creative mind behind Apple products when they first started <clears throat> changing their look back in the year 1999, 2000, which is modern day to what we have now of, you know, these crisp, clean, insanely simple, useful products mm -hmm. that they sell basically like that's when the bubble Mac came out like the the bubble computers and before then all the computers they had that beige tan mm -hmm. you know they look like crappy you know what I'm saying and yeah. so they wanted to change the look of that um, and so uh, Joni 
was kind of the mastermind behind that. But if you really think about it, the true mastermind behind that, which is where Joni learned everything that uh, he learned from studying him, was a guy named Dieter Ram. Dieter Ram was like product designer for a bunch of different companies, but he's most known for product design from uh, Braun, the company Braun, that's mm -hmm. still around till today. Joni took what uh, Dieter had done and kind of just like amplified it even more. So that's like, if you read stuff about Joni, that's kind of who his biggest influence was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this whole idea of what Dieter came up with years and years ago, back in the, what, 40s, 50s, um, of just simplicity. Like the products he created for Braun back 60, 70 years ago are products that you could see on a shelf today and be yeah. like, oh, that looks like it was literally designed this year yeah. because they're so clean. And you can see that transition across all their pages and everything they do in their products of just that simplicity. And it all stemmed back to that because they saw that, that was those products sold a lot because they were so different. And the look was different. And that's how you get people to buy your products is not only are they amazing products, but the way that you present them to people is super duper important. And the cleaner that something looks, people just gravitate towards that because mm -hmm. it looks more high end. And, and minimalism is hard to do. The hardest stuff is taking, you know, all this, like an iPhone could have a million gizmos attached to it. The hardest thing to do is take stuff away. So it's just one you know, unibody crisp product. Well, so what I do is like, I, I, you know, kind of just an overview of the page. So I, I use this plugin up here. I don't know what it's called, but um, anyhow, so here's just a quick overview of the page. So of course we're using the San Francisco Pro Text. That's Apple's thing. It, uh, if you don't have that on your computer, it backs down to Helvetica. Is it Noi? New? Noi? New. I say new. I say new. Um, and then we can also look at the color palette right here. So pretty simple color palette. Most of it's black, white. There's a little blue in there. There's a little red. So again, to your point, you're not, we're not looking at 50 colors. We're looking at blue, red, and then off shades of black and white. So it's it's really simple. The uh, color up with the quote unquote white space. Yeah. So just these, especially like you're showing all those floating iPhone images. Like that's those solid background colors. If there was more than just that dark gray color behind it, it would be super distracting. Well, then let's scroll on down. So the first thing that I'm noticing when I come here and we scroll down, and let me refresh it just one more time just to kind of get that uh, headline effect. So the first thing I see, here we go. I mean, pretty, just really clean, short phrasing, lots of love, less to spend. You know, Apple's kind of known for that short, punchy, uh, sales okay. copy on their page and then if we scroll down a little bit more like you said we're just kind of continuing with that uh, 3d model in the background and see that's nice so that's what I think of like Apple sales pages is kind of the the tip of like the cutting edge of what's going on in front-end development so you can see with this I mean it's just a 3d model that's kind of got some light playing off of it anything that jumps out at you in the, kind of this section uh, I mean, those those 3D renders are amazing. Mm -hmm. I I always say that out of all the companies that I've ran across who do 3D renders, theirs are number one. The fact that you know it's not even the 3D renders; it's the how they code the movement yeah. into the page. Like it's literally unbelievable. Of you know, as that phone is is shifting to the like your your average page, if you would go to a lot of websites, that phone would be flat the entire time mm -hmm. or at a certain angle and it would just shift across the page. But the fact that not only do they get it to shift across the page, but they get it to rotate at the same time, there's something different about that than most other companies are willing to even spend time to work on and do. And again, there is those, those short, punchy things that they're saying, like, again, durable glass and aluminum design, that's all that they're saying. They're not explaining the glass they're not ex having to put their one little what is that five words that's what they're known for is their team has amazing wordsmiths people who are really good at copy and yeah. just like that's their thing when it comes to wordsmithing they are whoever's on their team is amazing and, and that's what i'm thinking too is like how just how long that takes on on all the different screen sizes just to get that you know this headline lined up right here and then if you scroll down more and mm -hmm. it switches over i mean that's it's tedious stuff that takes a long time on all screen sizes. And let's let's scroll, sure. scroll down a little bit more. So here's something that interests me. And of course, you know, there's just some more of the 3D effects coming and it transitions into a video. So here's some of that engagement stuff. Like as you're bringing this up, 
it dissolves and it becomes more opaque and then it dissolves into a gaming video. If you keep scrolling down, that's going to zoom out into, uh, doesn't do a phone this time, but you know, yeah, that's just some of that engagement. I mean, it's just, it's like watching a movie. It's entertaining to look through this sales page and you're just continuing to get more information as you scroll through. Exactly. And like that transition into the text, that it's it, the, the text comes out and as the text comes out that white space turns into the video it's honestly i think they may be the only ones who are doing stuff like that when yeah. it comes to like people are embedding video into their websites and things like that that are cool but it may just be a section of video it's nothing where there's animation that actually goes into the video like that a13 processor chip does yeah it's, it's phenomenal. So what they're doing here, if, if anyone's watching this and wondering, probably how they're doing this, I haven't looked into it, but essentially when you scroll down, they're stopping the A13 element in the middle of the screen, and as you scroll down, they're pinning it to the screen, they're increasing the, uh, using CSS to increase the scale of it, and then when it gets here, what they're doing is they're programmatically reducing the opacity, and then it continues to scale up, continues to reduce the opacity, and then you're in a full-scale video. So so for anyone watching, it's the same thing as a, as a normally scrolling website, but they're just able to to pin that A13 element, increase it, and it just creates that effect. It's, it's, a, it's badass. So continuing to scroll down, something else that I see a lot, I, I see a lot of website owners and, and business owners and whoever going with, going with center aligned text, sometimes the whole width of the screen, you know, it might be like 90%. Something Apple does, they do Skinny text in the center of the screen, left aligned. And the reason they do that is because they know the majority of people um, surf the internet on their phones now. Mm -hmm. This website, or this page, their entire website is built for back in the day when people, and you know this, back in the day when people were uh, designing websites, they specifically thought about where will people be surfing the web, mm -hmm. surfing. As I say, <laughs> uh, they will be surfing the web on their computers, laptops, whatever. These days, the I know so many people who don't even own laptops anymore. Yeah, they either own iPads or some sort of tablet, or they literally do all of their work on their phones. Everything, and it's unbelievable. And so that is what Apple has done: is that they're focusing their design more on a tablet or iPhone user because they know that that is such a growing demographic of technology where everyone's using because people don't feel like they need laptops anymore mm -hmm. and so that's why when they do their websites it is specifically created why it's floating in the middle of the screen and not stretched to the side is because that is built for their tablets and that is built for phones because they know the majority of people are using phones and tablets more than they're using laptops the design for a computer screen is in the back of their minds that's yeah. not the forefront. that is secondary to them Designing for phones and tablets are primary to them. Is that left aligned text going to be, is, is that just the new modern look? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. It looks cleaner. It's not that it's easier to read or anything like that, which it kind of is if it's left aligned. It's like reading a book. Yeah. Um, and it's it's not centered. And I want to say years ago, I want to say that Apple did used to center their stuff. Yep. Like, it's a design trend is, is really what it is. And it's a design trend that a lot of companies have picked up and just ran with it. I mean, I when I do advertising and print design and things like that, left aligned is usually uh, what I do unless uh, uh, clients specifically ask not to. But then again, design trends come and go. And yeah. five years from now, this may not be what people are doing anymore. It probably won't be what people are doing because... There'll be a different trend that's out, and trends change so quickly. Well, and I know we're hanging on this this section for a while, but take out the video in the background. This is just a white screen with a with a piece of text on it, maybe 50 words. I feel like if I open Photoshop and I just took, you know, Helvetica or, or even San Francisco and typed that out, it would not look as crisp as that does. Why does this? What are they doing to this paragraph, to the, the kerning and the line height to make it look so nice? Their kerning is, it's, it's pretty average. I wouldn't say that because every single font has a different, you know, a, a kerning algorithm that they use. And this one doesn't seem super, because again, San Francisco is based off of Helvetica. Naturally tight. It's just a tight kerning and that's just how it is. 
Um, and sometimes what people do is they'll even tighten it up and go negative kerning. So mm. when I use um, Helvetica or Helvetica New or New House, New House Grotesque, which is, I like it even better than Helvetica. Mm. It's just a different variation of it. I will put my kerning on a lot of those uh, sentences to, you know, negative five, negative 10, which that just means that your letters are a little bit closer together. There's something about those tight letters that make it look more professional. Hmm. If you looked at this and, and the, the kerning or the letters were, you know, spread out a little bit more, you, you would look at it and say, that kind of looks weird. But there's just certain fonts. It's, it's that, it's that uh, style that, you know, it just the tighter it is, the, um, I don't know, there's something about it that it, it's more appealing to the eye. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the line spacing is, is very nice. It's not too, it's, in a way, because of that that tight kerning, I wouldn't say that these. Something I've noticed in websites, especially on headers, is the the spacing on the the headers and the subheaders are usually a little bit wider than the body huh. um, body copy is. Um, here they seem about equal. the The line spacing is not it's not super tight and it's not super far. I it, honestly, it's probably at, at what it's set to be at when it's you know naturally coded into you know this is just our automatic line height or our automatic uh, width between lines and all that so you, you look at it and i don't know how they do it again these people are designers and they're web designers and this is what they do and it's just like second nature to them yeah like, you know, for your average person they're gonna look at it and they're gonna say that looks really awesome but i can't tell and your average person who jumps on photoshop or illustrator or something like that or InDesign or whatever program they're using to do this it's going to take them a while to get something looking like that. The way that the kerning and the tracking and all that is, it's, it, I mean, it's near perfect, if not perfect. It's just nuts. You can see the letter spacing down there is negative point zero zero nine. Yeah. So see, there is a there is a negative yep. kerning. Yep. Yep. It just brings it tightly, like that's in the code down there under the letter spacing on the right side under styles. But like I said, that's just. I knew that they had to do something like that because I'm sure naturally just built into the font, it's a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. and so you have to do that negative kerning. It makes it more fancy or high end. Yeah. Something about it just makes it feel more high end. Agreed. Yeah. And, and look at this, like even with the font size. So here we're at 64 pixels. I'm sure that's probably not hard coded. That's probably like calculated. But then if you come down to the paragraph below it, it's 32 pixels. So we're looking at a two to one ratio right there. Yep. And the line height, like, you know, with this 1.0625, that's calculated. So it's taking probably the viewport width and, and going from there. The font weight's at 700. So we're pretty thick font weights, too. Like, I guess your normal one's 400. Um, yeah, they range from 300 all the way up to about sometimes 900, depending on how thick. But I would call that more of a – did it say that the header and the subhead was both the same weight? Are they both 700? They were different. So the, so the head, header is 7 and the body is 6. Which is what I would expect because uh, you want your header to be a little bit thicker, which is I would call that more of like a bold. I would say that's bold. Yeah. And then I would say the below it, it would be your medium weight or your semi-bold. Yeah. Uh, which gives you just that boldness really helps bring out the text. Because if, if that bottom was any lighter, it would probably look a little bit not cheaper, but there's something about that line. If that was one line weight lighter, it probably wouldn't look as uh, professional. That's that's the thing is if you dropped it down just one or two weights, which say that the top is bold, and let's just go with a regular for the bottom. It wouldn't give that same effect that the like that semi bold feeling gives. I think you dropped it down one line weight and you look at it and you're just like, oh, I don't know, that just doesn't look as good. Yeah, really. And then even take, you know, let's take it down to 300 right there. Yeah, it's not as powerful. It's not. It just, it to me, it like vibrates my eyes almost. Like I, I think if you had to fit that in, you would maybe want to reduce the opacity of those words. Yeah, it's not as strong and it makes, and they want their products to be strong products and to give that feeling of strong, again, it's a, it's showing their product in that same mentality across their website. So they That's want to awesome. show a strong product. So they are going to do strong things like stronger, bolder, you know, typography to reflect their products. That's awesome. That's a really good nugget. I never thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else. 
So again, we've got, you know, just really, I mean, super good. How do you get that high quality of a shot that loads fast? I, I mean, is that a, is that's probably a rendering, right? Versus a that photograph. Is, that is a render. Yeah. Um, um, because it would be too much, it would be too difficult to get a high quality shot like that, especially with what they're doing. Like, that's unbelievable. You can see the the grain of the aluminum. Yeah. Like, literally, I'm looking at my phone right now and they look identical. Yeah. Um. And the thing, it's just very high quality 3D programs. I have buddies that do stuff like that and they can do that. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to do stuff like that. We'll keep scrolling down. Um, again, kind of the same thing right here that we just talked about. Like it's narrow, it's uh, it's a little choppy because we're doing like this hardcore streaming here. But there yeah. we go. So there's an, there's another example of that. You pin the icon, you scale it up, you reduce the opacity, and it turns into this guy. Let's get on to this one. So again, we're looking at left aligned. All to my eye looks the same font weight. But the, the simple thing they're doing here, they're not doing another headline, subheadline. They're just changing. They're using color to make the headline stand out. Yes. So to them, at this point in time, in the design... They, the only thing that they really care for you to really pay attention to going down is depth control. So mm. as we scroll through, you'll see these keywords that are um, bolder than other ones. Because again, you don't have to, your average person, like if you scroll back up to the top and it said, okay, portrait lighting, depth control, like those words bring to your attention. But if you, if you stop on it, it says choose from uh, oh, sorry, yeah. six studio or whatever, the choose from six studio quality effects, then adjust the lighting intensity to show that your subject and the best possible. That's, that is an afterthought to them, which is why mm. it's that lighter color because all that they really care, if you're scrolling through and you only see the word portrait lighting or you only see whatever words that they're highlighting, that's all that they really care for you to know because your average consumer isn't really going to care about the, the rest of it they want to see those words like oh i know what portrait lighting is and if that's bold that means it's got great portrait lighting yeah like that's in your mind that's automatically what you're thinking is oh if these are the words that they're highlighting then there must be something special about that and most people aren't going to read through like but they are going to just pick out those key words that you're like oh portrait lighting that sounds important and then you keep scrolling and stuff and so if these are the things they must be really good at portrait lighting i must be able to take amazing photos you know well and this is what's what's interesting to me too about these pictures um, a, a lot of times I feel like designers or, or, or myself included will use like drop shadows to, you know, kind of bring out a 3d effect, no drop shadows here on the pictures, nothing at all. I mean, like it, rather though, something I see in these pictures, so they're flat, but really bold colors. Like you've got this super eye popping green, eye popping yellow with their yellow hair, the red. So it's, it's almost like letting the pictures do the talking versus the effect of a drop shadow. Yes, and for drop shadows these days, I would say that they're not going out of style because drop shadows aren't going out of style, but they're used for very specific applications huh. these days. Again, I work on products and some, some products that I work on, I was working on something the other, the other night where... I wanted to put a product on this white background, but I wanted to do a light drop shadow, which your average person wouldn't even realize that there's a drop shadow on it because it was so light. But when you took it away, it just didn't look the same. Uh, hmm. But when you come to photography, like drop shadows on photos and things like that, it's not really used as much as it used to be. Again, that was a design trend yeah. that you know was used for a while, but it's slowly inching its way out. And it may come back at some point because uh, – all trends in life, uh, design trends, fashion trends, technology trends, it's on a, a weird parabola that goes up and down, up and down, and things come in and come out. Most designers aren't pioneers. They see mm -hmm. other things like me. Um, I see things that I like. I'm like, oh, I want to implement that somehow in a project or this or that. And then there's those few people who are really pioneering the way who are trying new things before other people do, and then other people just follow. Where do you where do you go to kind of, like if I was like, I want you to, to design me something that's like the cutting edge of, of popular trendy design right now. What, where would you, where are some stops you'd make? For websites specifically, I think a really good site to look at is behance.net. Yeah. Um, the design that they have is useful design. A lot of it on there is useful design that's used in print and web and things like that. And then you have sites like Dribbble, who I would say was a good thing. But those are mainly illustrations. Hmm. Uh, 
Dribbble has a, there's a lot of um, illustration. Again, they do a lot of UI UX stuff on there too. A lot of it, as you can tell, is mainly for your iPhone because that is super important. Everybody's designing for phones and tablets these days. Yeah. Again, web design is on the back burner. These other things are first and foremost because that's the trend of where people are buying things. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of illustration, a lot of logo design on this site, um, a lot of UI UX stuff, which is really cool. And a third site I, I have been going to a lot recently is a site called Logo Lounge. Hmm. Um, they do specifically logos. That is it. Um, they come out with a publication once every about 18 months to two years. Nice. Um, that has the... 3,000 most popular logos in it, and it's sold in places like Barnes & Noble, your big bookstores. And if you make it in that publication, then that is like the creme de la creme of logo design. Um, this year actually was the first year I actually submitted to um, Logo Lounge, so we'll see if anything I've done makes it in. I submitted 40 logos that I've done over the past couple of years, and uh, we'll see if they like any of them. If not, that's fine. And there's some great design, like the great, all the designers that I look up to, are, their stuff is on there. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Dude. And another one is, uh, this is where I go for like front end stuff, is awards.com. Like Dribble, this has got three, three W's. This is kind of like web focused. And I don't know how they find these or pick these, but you can go here and find kind of what's going on with front end web design. And you can even break it down into categories like they have, um, animations and like if you go into the winners you can find like what's going on in uh animation or if you wanted to use something like uh you know here they're using angular or the facebook api or express or firebase whatever cool place to check out what's going on kind of in the forefront and one thing that you'll see from all these sites which is really funny i saw these trends several years ago but they're just starting to companies are just starting to adopt them but this like very simple Helvetica, which is what they are using kind of in the Apple, but they use it in a different way. But everything looks super IKEA in a way. Of most websites are are using Helvetica and the, all the white space, and I don't know. Everything just looks very uh, Swedish. Look like it's very funny. Yeah. Uh, look at a bunch of websites these days and how you know simplified and simple everything is which is really good but it's it's funny because you can kind of look at all these websites they all look kind of similar in a way because they're all a lot of them are based on those design trends well and that's what's interesting and to go back to the apple site like look like look, look at this headline so that this headline the font size to me would probably be bigger than i would normally go to for a headline and mm -hmm. and that kind of harkens back to it might be like a Dieter ram thing i might have been thinking of uh Paul Rand. I know it's a little bit of a different, uh, you know, category of, of designer. Yeah. But to me, this is that big, like, Swedish minimalism. It, it's almost like a grotesque, bold, just, I mean, those are big letters. That's a big font yeah. size. Again, it's, it's them grabbing your attention. And I think the coolest thing about that right there is their whoever, I'm going to keep using the word wordsmith, their copywriter, whoever uh -huh. it is that does this. That headline is so amazing. Let there be light and shadow and contour. Like, it's so genius. Yeah. Of something you've heard a million times. Let there be light. Like that's yeah. just like. And it's not cheesy. No. Like, yeah. It's, not, it's it to an extent. It's, it's it's again. It's very witty because you wouldn't ex you would not expect a phrase like that to be on a site like this. And that's hard to do. Like it's hard to come up with like cliches like that that are recognizable but not cheesy. Exactly. Um, you know, same kind of thing right here. Big, big uh, font sizes. You've got a video. This is the kind of stuff you normally see, just like an embedded video behind an iPhone, um, essentially transparent PNG. But look what we're about to do. We're about to scale up. So again, they're using, they're sticking the element to the screen and they're scaling it up. And I would imagine, uh, yeah, it transitions to a full it, screen it's video. It's funny because the reason they're doing that, the headline before that was talking about high definition video. So they're showing you what the video is on the phone, and when it zooms in, like look how high definition this actually is, full screen. Like oh, the wow. way that their the way that their transitions work, and their 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 copy, and it's it's unbelievable. You know, we kind of see this the same thing there, left aligned. Kind of see the video here using, um, you know, kind of this again, just using color to take the headline out and separate it from the body when really you're using the exact same font it looks like mm -hmm. 
So here's kind of, you know, here we'll see like a, a centered text. Why do you think that they would go from, for right here, from left to center, just to break break it up a little bit? I think to break it up and because it's so short, mm. uh, it's only four words and there's nothing, when you saw things that were left aligned, it led into, like the first thing we saw that was left aligned was more than up top, I think all those are about 10 words-ish or less when it was left aligned by itself, but that's just like four words, that's it. And so I think just putting that in the middle, front and center, see like they did it right there. As it's, it has to do with, and again, you can't, I'm not the designer, so I don't know why they did what they did. It works because I guess that they just want that to be, this is super important to us, so we want it to be front and center. Hmm. So, it's uh, so it's probably a mix of just like breaking it up and then also a shorter text, it probably commands more attention centered like that. Yeah, and with how easy all this design looks, because you would look at it, oh, I bet you this was so easy to do. The thought process that they had behind each little thing that they do was super intricate, lots of meetings, I would assume. Yeah. I'm sure there were a million different redos of this page Yeah, to get it exactly right, because again, they don't put out products that are not 100% but there's a reason why they did what they did right there, because they want it to be that front and center. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know what their thought process was behind it, but again, it works. Yeah. And it's one of those things that maybe they thought if everything was left aligned the entire time, maybe that gets a little bit boring after a while. We need people's eyes to shift around because that's important. Mm -hmm. This is something cool too. Again, we've got like centered with the icon. This is kind of probably what you traditionally see, but this is not stark white. So that's kind of a, a gray. So that's it's drawing attention to this headline. That's the first place your eye goes. And then the second place is this, it's what I would call like a tertiary um, call to action button. So we know that it's clickable or something because it's blue and nothing else is, 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 is blue. So it's like, it doesn't want, that's not like what it wants you to focus on right now. Obviously that's the buy button, but there's just a tertiary action button right there. Interesting. So we'll see, we see that a lot in kind of a, different pages and again just more like bold like you said bold lettering using color to separate these versus size or weight even though they are different another again, high another another high def definition amazing render yep and probably the good thing about the renders too i might be wrong on this but they're probably uh less expensive to load in terms of page load speed than a high quality image, even if you compress oh, yeah, it. Yeah, they can, can they can compress those files like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, again, high quality photography. I mean, you can like see the skin cells on that person's hand. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of gross. Which is a little bit gross. <laughs> I might not have made that design decision. Uh, all right, so now we're kind of getting into, again, left aligned, really skinny, you know, only taking up maybe a third of the page. But now we start to see the drop shadows. Uh, a couple of them. And this is interesting to me, the drop shadows here, because it's like, you know, think of it as someone standing up here shining a light down. So we're looking down, the light's coming from the top, and if we scroll in, even if these are artificial drop shadows, I assume they are, look how, like, they're starting off darker, they're going more transparent here. Mm -hmm. and they're like real shadows. Yeah, they're like real shadows. It's literally like someone is standing at a 45 degree angle and shining a flashlight in a way or a light and that's the thing is like we know these are renders that's not a photo these are renders yeah um and you know the render program that they're using which i don't know what people are using cinema 4d i have no idea what what they're actually using for those renders but it's really and the transition between that color and this next one that comes in black it's awesome yeah that's that's just simple engaging quality it keeps you scrolling down the page and it's not yeah. it's not a hard effect to achieve, but it's just done so well. And then you know, of course, it transitions again. For anyone watching this, sorry about the lag. I think w with the video and and probably all the stuff that's loading on this web page, it's a little bit laggy. It doesn't really look like this. Um, then you kind of get down to what you see on a lot of websites, which is the the icons and things yeah. like that. Iconography. Mm -hmm. Now they're using kind of bigger icons here than, you know, maybe you see smaller ones. And that's because icons are built to be small. These are specifically built to be this size. What if, you know, 64, maybe 100 pixels tall. Mm -hmm. And then and then just on and on. And then you kind of get into the, like, the more basic stuff. And, and what they're thinking here probably is if you get down this far, you're probably pretty either 
really convinced or you're not going to buy it. Yeah. So it's, that's, the thing. that's why they put the accessories at the bottom is because if you've scrolled down that far, it's mm -hmm. because you wanted to know everything about that phone. And so if you've already wanted to know everything about that phone, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we can sell them on the <laughs> We got them. That's, that's, their, that's, their final, that's their final hook right there. So yeah. We got them. You know, we can, they're, if they're buying the phone, because that's the thing, who buys an iPhone without buying a case for it? Yeah. There's very few people that do it. I've done it because I was trying to live my life on the edge. And, <laughs> I, and I shattered it. Um, Don't so tip I, fade. I buy man. cases now. They do look a lot better without cases on them because it's just such, it's like a work of beauty. And, and another thing, if we scroll up real quick, you'll see that no matter what, except for like the full width images, nothing comes out of like this. Everything is like in the middle, middle fifty, let's say. So yeah. you know they're not. It's this is not like a this is not like a ninety percent wide website except for the photography is which you see a lot. Everything is instead of being brought there, it's brought right into the center and uh, you know just very and again brings you back to your point of looking on a phone. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's literally what they're. They know that they browse the internet on. Phones. So that's the page. Um, any kind of like, any more like anything I missed? Any other takeaways that maybe you latched onto that I I wasn't seeing? I mean, I feel like we went pretty in depth as yeah. like scrolling through. But again, Apple, their use of white space and just spacing in general is is phenomenal. Less is more, yeah. and it always less to an extent. Less is more. I've seen sites where they don't have enough and it looks empty. They do a great job of a balance between the, the perfect amount of text, the ter perfect amount of white space, because you can have all the white space in the world, but if every single section that they went to was only, you know, four or five words long, you're like, what the heck am I even looking at? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the way that they're able to implement, and again, there is a psychology to the amount of words that they use when scrolling through like everything is everything that you're seeing here is based on psychology yeah and they know that and that's how they get people to scroll through and it sounds like it's crazy like no way like psychology <laughs> is why people this whole website is yeah. based around psychology and what people are attracted to and what they're not again you're not going to see there's 22 23 words right there mm -hmm. and for each section they have a set amount of words that they even want to use and it's they go one word over, they're going to figure out a way to, to rephrase it. It's like what a comedian does to get to his punchline. Anybody can copy the Apple website. Anybody. Mm -hmm. if there's nothing special about that on top of the design of the site is the other things that they bring to the table, like the typography and, um, you know, again, their wordsmithing capabilities. Yeah. And the way that they phrase things, like those things are important too. Just because you have a beautiful website doesn't mean that people are going to care. Well, this is great, dude. I learned a lot. Thank you for for coming on and and kind of going over this with me. Any any uh, website if, if people want design work, brookshungate.com. Yeah, B R O O K S Hungate H U N G A T E dot com. Yep, and I'll link that in the description below too. Get that quick little portfolio of companies yeah. I've worked with, and you know different logos. So, well, hey, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I'd love to do this again. If anyone has any questions, type them to us. E email him to Brooks, uh, not me, just Brooks only. Inundate his <laughs> his mailbox. Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks for letting me uh, do this with you. Appreciate it. Yeah, and guys, please subscribe to the channel if that was helpful. I'm Brandon Styles. Thanks for watching.